when you came on as Archbishop, did you ever make any effort from the time of your installation and to the discovery of the Levan material by Kinsel to see actually if the statements you were making to the public about the safety of the children were true. I met with my staff and they affirmed for me the fact that there was no one in ministry who had uh, credibly abused uh, uh, any children. When did you first meet with your staff to make such a determination that uh, the environment was safe? Shortly after my um, reception into the Archdiocese as co-adjutor. Uh, what staff did you meet with to determine the safety of the environment and whether or not there were priests in ministry who had offended? I met with my delegate for uh, safe environments and I met with my um, civil and canonical uh, chancellors. And so the delegate for safe environments was then Kevin McDonough? He was indeed. Appointed by you to be just that title, right? I did, yes. He had been previously appointed by Archbishop Flynn. And he, was it his job, at least as you understood it, his appointment to be to make sure that the environment was safe and he was the point guy for handling that? That's correct. Okay. And that first meeting then was with McDonough and with the chancellors, both um, Jennifer Hesselberger. No, she wasn't there. Then. She wasn't there at that who time. Was, who were the chancellors? Uh, Sister Dominica. I can't think of her last name, but Sister Dominica. And Mr. Andy Eisenzimmer. And how long was that meeting, uh, sir? I, to the best of my recollection, it was um, approximately two hours, I believe. It was a long meeting. And was that at the chancery in your office? It was at the chancery in one of our meeting rooms, yes. And in <coughs> preparation for that meeting, did you order or request that they review any or all materials held by the archdiocese concerning uh, priests who may have been accused, credibly or otherwise? I asked, um, at the time of the meeting, I asked them to give me all that they knew concerning uh, the safe environments of the archdiocese. And uh, did uh, anybody put uh, uh, or record by memo or recording uh, the contents of that meeting? I don't believe so. So it was all verbal? It was verbal, yes. And um, at that meeting, uh, were you presented with any written materials? I was not, no. Did you know, you knew there had, had been a list compiled under the, child for the Charter for Protection of Children that a list of credibly accused offenders, correct? I was aware of that. I'm not sure I was aware of that at that time, but uh, I was aware shortly after my uh, arrival. Well, you were a bishop in New Ulm when the Charter for Protection of Children was established in 2002. Correct. And you attended those meetings where promises were made to the public. Correct. Across this nation that we're going to have a zero tolerance policy, correct? Correct. And you were part of one, one of the bishops that made such a representation to the people in the U.S. about zero tolerance, correct? Correct. So you knew at that time the bishops then commissioned John Jay to do a study to determine, who, based on information given them, um, various lists of credibly accused of, of offenders. I don't recall exactly when that list was asked for. My recollection was it was in 2004, but I'm not, uh, I'm not sure about that. That sounds correct. In any case, you knew in 2004 or thereabouts that the bishops had compiled lists of offenders, credibly accused. I did, yes. Did you ask that such a list for the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis be presented to you at this first meeting concerning safe environment in this Archdiocese? I did not. Why not? It didn't occur to me. So um, tell me then, um, who conducted the meeting? Um, Father McDonough yeah. conducted the meeting. And um, t 
tell us what Father McDonough told you, Archbishop, responsive to your request about um, the safe or lack of safe environment in the Archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis, and what priests had been accused and what priests um, were or were not in ministry. Well, he described for me the POMS program that we have, which is our monitoring system for priests who have um, abused, and uh, explained to me how that worked, and um, uh, explained the situation of uh, what those priests, uh, that those priests were not engaged in ministry. And okay, I'm going to stop you there. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you said the POMS program? Yes. POMS is um, spell, spell that. P O M E S, I believe. Okay. P O M S, I believe, yeah. P O M S. And, uh, you said that was a monitoring program, correct? Correct. And uh, did you ask him the names of the priests that were being monitored under the POMS program as McDonough recited this to you? Um, I. I had asked for the meeting, and he was chairing the meeting, and he began to tell me the, peop the, the individuals who were under the, the POMS program. Who were those individuals? I can't recall all the names right now. Uh, why didn't you write it down? Um, it didn't occur to me at the time to do so. At the time, didn't it seem like one of the most important things you needed to do as Archbishop, knowing the crisis of, of uh, in America of Catholic clergy abusing kids to know who in this archdiocese had been accused and who were currently being monitored? Well, I had asked for the meeting precisely so that I would know what the situation was and that I could assure myself and assure my publics that the environments were safe. But Archbishop, you can't remember who that was that you were told today. There were several names that were uh, given to me, and uh, I was assured that their situations were uh, being monitored and that um, they were uh, not likely to reoffend. And that was the primary purpose of the meeting. And you say several names, how many? Uh, I don't recall exactly. There were, um, there were several. Well, what does several mean? Is that more than 10 or less than 10? Well, object. You, you don't have to guess, Archbishop. If you know, you can answer, and if you don't... I, I, I really don't know. How many... How were you told these priests were being monitored? I don't understand the question. What were you told about how these priests who had been accused were actually being monitored so that they would not offend or reoffend? Well, I was told that uh, we have a, a promoter of these safe environments who meets regularly with um, the individuals. Uh, I was told that uh, they were um, uh, undergoing regular uh, therapy, that they were in spiritual direction, um, and that they had to sign uh, a contract uh, to the effect of how they would be monitored. Who is a promoter of safe environment? Um, right now it's John Selvig. Who was it then? I can't recall the name. Um, when you say then, you're referring to the time of the meeting? Yes. I can't recall his name. Okay. And when you say that um, they were to sign an agreement, would that be an agreement not to reoffend? It was a, it was a signed statement. Uh, indicating what we expected of them. I don't believe that it said in those 
categories, although it was understood that they weren't to offend again. And did you have any personal knowledge or experience with offenders, uh, clergy or non-clergy, who are accused and who have uh, offended, that there is a high recidivism rate, and when they do reoffend? They often lie and deny about it, so that you can't rely upon them. Were you aware of that? Uh, I believe I was, yes. Well, then what made you think then, if you did, that simply monitoring them and asking if they're reoffending would work? I asked uh, Father McDonough at that meeting to tell me what we were doing in terms of making sure that these men were being monitored uh, and that they had a program that we were holding them to. Did you, as a result of that meeting, um, disclose to anybody in the public or any of the parishioners any of the names that you were given by your team about those priests who were being monitored and who had offended? I did not personally know. Did anybody under your direction, working with and under or for you in the Archdiocese? I believe I was told that Father McDonough carried out those uh, disclosures. What disclosures did he make? Um, he, he did not. Um, as I re recall, he did not tell me exactly who he made the disclosures to, but generally speaking, they were people in the parish well, where they served. Didn't you ask? Didn't you say, Father McDonough, we have a number of priests who you, the exact number you can't remember today, who are under monitoring, who we know have offended in the past. Um, didn't you go back and say, tell me exactly what you're going to do and when you're going to do it to make the public know? I asked for that meeting so that I would understand more clearly how the environments that we have in our parishes and our schools would be safe for children. And that's our primary uh, objective. Archbishop, isn't it correct that you really didn't want the public and the, and the people to know who was being uh, monitored at that time? Well, it's objection. That's argumentative, counsel. A you can ask answer. a question. Uh, I don't believe that's true, no. Well, then, um, can you tell me uh, exactly what offenders that had been a monitor or, or, or under monitoring were then actually disclosed to the public as a result of that meeting? I can't answer that, no. 